Uh, thank you. Um, as all of you will know, it was just over a year ago when David Bowie died. Um, and this collaboration we've done together comes about from um, a conversation Tom and I had um, around a similarity in appearance between David Bowie and Sam Beckett. Um, we realised that never both being seen together in the same place at the same time. Um, so what we did, uh, we burrowed deeply, um, rather than write something, uh, burrowed deeply into various <coughs> archives. Uh, the archive of the Gaddison pub in Bermondsey, where a private collector has a selection of Bowie's letters. Um, and also, um, we, we made a trip over to the uh, archive de Paris uh, to look at some of uh, Beckett's letters. And what we're going to present is a premiere, we think, um, in the correspondence between David Bowie and Sam Beckett. So I'm going to read uh, Sam, Sam Beckett's letters to David, um, and Tom's going to read Bowie's letters to Sam. I'm going to kick off with this one, quite early in the correspondence. <coughs> David, many thanks for the eyeliner. Your performance at the Freddie Mercury tribute concert was like watching asparagus grow from the roof of a charnel house. That, that green suit you wore, do you think I could borrow? Do you think it would look wrong to roll up the sleeves as you did at that Jagger collaboration, two 1980s perhaps? It's taken me several decades to dust off James Joyce's sartorial influence. His leaky bladder played havoc with his limited choice of suits. But dancing was a different thing. When he kicked off, it was like a one-man dance macabre. He'd have had Jagger pleading for mercy. Didn't know you were still in touch with Tony Hadley. It's down to him that I'm still here. That Breville toaster who loaned me has been a jewel in dozens of literary gatherings. It's a shame about what happened to the cat from Shakespeare and Co. Just how Hemingway mistook it for a steak, I don't know. Yours, Sam. Sam, thanks for the scotch eggs. I ate six and gave one to Eno for a roughage. I'm afraid the suit is on loan to Richard Maidley. You might have seen it on Dictionary Corner on Countdown. Pinter told me you're having trouble with your dentures. I recommend Ambrosia creamed rice. It's all I ate in the 70s apart from bird's eye potato waffles and caviar. <laughs> Pinter also told me that when you were writing Waiting for Godot, you lived on roadkill, stay fresh bread and cup of soup. He said the sight of you trying to put a squirrel in a sandwich toaster was what started him off with black comedy. <laughs> By the way, I was in W.H. Smith the other day and got a voucher with 20% off Fat Trout Fisherman magazine. Would you be interested? I've already got a subscription. Yours, David. <laughs> David, you'll have heard the news. I was on holiday with Suzanne applying Factor 50 to her back when the news about the Nobel came through. What on earth were the judges thinking? Who are these patrician psychopaths locked away to assuage each other's egos regarding things they know nothing about? Have they lost the ability to read sentences? Everyone knows Dylan hasn't written anything decent since Lay Lady Lay. <laughs> I worry it distracts from the rest of us. You do have one, don't you? A Nobel, I mean, for contributions to peace in the solar system. Suzanne accused me of trying to strangle her. I said it was the actions of a man who hadn't felt the joy of ink through pen for some time. I need a holiday. Tunisia is like farm foods on a beach. Yours, Sam. Sam, I feel you. Michael Barrymore, John Barrowman, Ronan Keating, Ollie Bloody Murs. Sometimes I feel as if I'll never win rear of the year. <laughs> But you'll always be the people's champion, Sam, even if you don't get recognised in Debenhams, like I do. <laughs> the other day I popped in there for some egg cups and they had to smuggle me out inside a tumble dryer. <laughs> I do think you're a little harsh on Bob. I love a bit of travelling Wilburys when I'm on my cross trainer. <laughs> I've been watching my figure lately. Happily, I can still fit into the trousers I wore in the Let's Dance video. I found a receipt for a Boots meal deal in the pocket. I know it can't be mine. I'd never waste the snack option on apple slices. Yours, <laughs> David. David, glad to hear you're still at the same waist size. You always wear the tubbier of the two of us. That time I nipped through the doors of the tube at Cockfosters and left you on the platform with Rick Wakeman was a rare moment of satisfaction. I seemed to be going somewhere at the time. Then I spent the rest of the year repeatedly writing out the word sponge and crossing it out with a line is rubber. Yes, I'm playing ping pong again. 
I've had the bye through to the second round of the National Ping Pong Tournament and I've been pitched against a player who looks South American but turns out to be Swiss. I think his name's Gomringer. He looks a bit like Picasso. Apparently he's discovered a new way of making words disappear that doesn't involve the edible paper you mentioned. He's got a poem with the word silence in the middle, which I've been told is as much a part of the poem as the words around it. Sounds like, sounds like a load of old cock and balls to me. I think his weakness will be up against my top spin lob. Yours, Sam. Sam, Waitman simply distracted me by showing me the lining of his cape and trying to get me to join the Freemasons. He said it was like having a loyalty card for Cafe Nero but without the stamps. I seem to recall you were heading off to Tottenham Court Road for some new headphones for your Walkman. You were very into rap back then, I remember. Up to shout, stop, hammer time, at any moment. <laughs> like when he made Pinter drop his haddock outside the chip shop that night. Good luck against Gomringer. If you get through, you like to be up against the De Campos brothers, which I always think is unfair, given that there are two of them. <laughs> one of them takes care of the forehand, the other one takes care of the backhand, is written into their contract like Ant and Deck. <laughs> Tell me, Sam, why have they started to put salt and vinegar crisps in green packets? Is it something to do with modernism? Yours, David. <laughs> David, I remember the night. Pinter was less than impressed by my redo, making use of loose polystyrene boxes as bongos. I've had a revealing couple of days. I made it through to the final in the ping pong tournament. I made sure I'd work with the Campos brothers, who turned up wearing those t-shirts worn by the joggers on the 118118 advert. <laughs> They got into an argument in the first game about the best way to make a trans creationist text from Finnegan's Way. I played a straight ball down the middle and they banged heads, heads leaving them needing a minimalist white cloth to the temples. The next round was against a Scot called Ian Hamilton Finlay. He tried to decoy me by erecting a guillotine and place it on net, but I managed to place the ball just over the razor and was cited by Murray Walker as the most exciting sporting moment he'd seen since Nick Faldo crossed the channel in a Lido. In the final, I was up, up against a monk who went by the name of Dom Sylvester Huida. He struck up the Benny Hill theme tune and chased me around the table, trying to pinch my buttocks. I had to forgo the match in favour of my di dignity. I think if you put the salt and vinegar and cheese on your crisp packets together, they make a Joseph Albert's painting. Can you give it a go? Yours, Sam. Sam, I hear you were on Celebrity Big Brother. Did you by any chance meet Jedward when you were in there? I think it could be the model for the next phase of our careers. We could dress identically, stick up our hair and behave like a pair of lovable bell ends. <laughs> My move into street dance has been all I'd hoped for, and it's a long time since you produced anything new. Did you ever hear back from Holby City about that script you sent? The one set entirely in the waiting room of the podiatry clinic? <laughs> I'm afraid the saga of the suit goes on. Maybe he's away in a Scandinavian cruise at the moment with Giles Brandreth and the racist one from S Club 7. <laughs> there was a mix-up with his luggage and the green suit ended up in the wrong fjord. He'll be covered in pickled herring and a lingonberry jelly by now. On an unrelated note, do you know if you can still get on Bongo? Yours, David. Thank you. Thank you. Next time we cover and the essence of James Byrne. <laughs>